What is good everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul. I make videos about Japanese society, life and culture from the viewpoint of a long-term foreign resident. I'm really coming up close to my 20th anniversary and today's topic is a simple one in name. Easy to say, easy to kind of think about on the surface, but beneath that surface there are many many layers to this idea, this issue of what do Japanese people think about foreigners. Today I'm only going to talk about two of these layers and first I have to start with the caveat that obviously today I'm going to be making generalizations. I'm not saying that all Japanese people are the same, that all Japanese think this and all Japanese believe that. Like obviously that's not the case. I'm only going to be talking about these two things based on the fact that they're relatively common, something that you will encounter in Japan if you live here or even just visit here. And certainly if you've been here for a long time, you are aware of these two things. So what are those two things? I'm basically going to refer to them as pride and inferiority complex. What I mean by that is the Japanese will often see foreigners as a target or a place to show their pride or express their pride about Japanese society and Japanese culture. And that dances on the kind of knife edge of pride and inferiority complex, meaning there is a tendency or a manifestation of needing foreigners to kind of validate or remind or make the Japanese feel like, oh yes, we are special and unique. And that's because foreigners think so. So pride and inferiority complex, I'm going to be talking about those in detail and how they manifest in like officialdom, in media and in interpersonal relationships. So I'm going to start by talking about the pride aspect. And first off, Japan has led a long time campaign of soft power abroad. I'm talking about the Japanese government here. And for the most part, we can say it's been pretty darn successful. The image and views of Japan worldwide are very much positive and, you know, that's evidenced by the huge tourist boom right now, etc. The love of anime and other Japanese culture, the rise of Japanese food abroad, etc. In fact, what brought me to Japan, an exchange teaching program called the JET program, was originally formed by the Japanese Foreign Ministry as a source of soft power. They wanted to gather in young, fresh graduates from university, bring them to Japan, have them th have this real Japan experience and go back to their home country and become this voice of soft power of support for Japan and things Japanese. The ironic thing is the Japanese education ministry wanted nothing to do with this plan. They were like, we have our Japanese teachers teaching English. We don't need a bunch of foreigners suddenly showing up in our classrooms. Well, how are we going to run that? But the Japanese foreign ministry ended up winning out and the education ministry just had to go along with it in the end. Now, another example of this pride of wanting to share Japan and Japanese culture with outsiders is the fact that there's a course that I teach at my university that is all about English majors practicing their English in order to talk about Japan to foreign people. Just the fact that that course exists shows that there's clearly a market for this. But take a moment and think about that in the context of another country. And I'll use the United States because that's where I'm from. Imagine you go to university and there's a language course in Russian and the entire purpose of that course is for you to practice your Russian so that you can go to Russia and meet Russian people and talk about America. If you put it that way, it's kind of ridiculous, right? But in the Japanese context, it makes perfect sense. We want to share our pride with foreign people. We want to be able to explain Japan to foreigners in English. And so there's an entire course created for this. And as I said, the market's there as evidenced by the fact that it is my most chosen elective course. I get 90 students a semester in that course compared to 30 to 50 in my other electives. So clearly there's a demand for it. Now, as you think about it, there's a undercurrent of, it's kind of condescending, let's be honest. Like, there's this 
image that, oh, foreigners need to learn about unique and special Japan. And, oh, foreigners don't understand Japan, so we must teach them. Or even foreigners can't understand Japan. It's so unique and special that we have to try our best to fill them in on what Japan's really all about. Now, I try to mitigate that undercurrent in the course I teach because I often take issues and parts of Japanese society and there are things that the Japanese students have probably never ever thought about. Concepts like giri or obligation or meiwaku, like not causing trouble for others. And, you know, they're just taken as a matter of course, not really thought about, but we get into the history and the different layers of how it works in society, how it operates, how it is good and helps society function in this manner, but how it can become excessive and be bad for society in this other way. And hopefully the fact that, well, a foreigner is teaching this course and is helping them unpeel these layers of nuance that they've never thought about, hopefully they're getting a message that, oh, foreigners can understand Japan and we're actually learning about Japan from a foreigner. So maybe trying to stave off the condescending aspect of this concept. I don't know if it's successful, but I hope that's what's going on. Now, in interpersonal relationships, you will find this happening in how, well, I'm gonna put it this way. Anyone who's been in Japan for, I'd say, more than four or five years can probably relate to what I'm about to talk about. And that is, the way you're treated when you're a fresh face, newly to Japan foreigner versus a long-term resident is completely different. Basically, when I first got to Japan, and let me know in the comments if this was your experience as well, you had a lot of Japanese people who kind of went out of their way to want to talk to you about Japan and things Japanese and ask you, well, have you seen this? Or do you know about that? Or even, can I take you and we'll do this? Or you should see this, let's go and take a look. And it ends up you have these kind of really amazing, a lot of fun experiences with the Japanese showing their pride in their society and their culture and they want to show it off to you. But once you put on that air of I've been here, I've been here a while, and as soon as Japanese comes out of your mouth, suddenly you're not so interesting anymore. It's like, oh, this is, this is just a normal person. This is not someone I can teach about Japan anymore. And so I'm not fun anymore. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So again, in interpersonal interactions, you're going to find, especially if you're new to Japan, that there's a lot of pride that Japanese people are going to want to talk to you about Japan and things Japanese. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's such a great experience for tourists who come here, because you're going to get that for sure as a tourist. Now, on the other side of this, dancing on the knife edge, and it's possible to fall off into the negative aspect, is a sort of inferiority complex. There seems to be this need or desire by Japanese to reaffirm that, oh yes, Japan is unique and special, and they use foreign viewpoints to affirm that for them. In the media, you'll find that national news broadcast programs, I'm not talking about local news, but national news programs, every few days will have a segment where a reporter's out on the street interviewing foreign tourists and asking things like, what do you like about Japan? What's the best thing about Japan? What do you find special about Japan? Or what is your best memory about Japan? And again, I want you to think about this in the context of where you're from or where I'm from the United States, imagining like the ABC, NBC, CNN, like their nightly news broadcast, going out and asking tourists to the United States, what do you like about the United States? What's the best thing about America for you? I think most people would watch that and be like, what? What are we watching? Why is this on the national news? Who cares? But again, in Japan, there seems to be a market for that because every week they have a segment like that. You get these same questions in your interpersonal relationships as well. People who meet you for the first time will ask you those exact same questions. Oh, what do you like about Japan? What's the best thing about Japan? 
when they find out you live in Japan, it'll become, oh, what's the best thing about living in Japan? And even more detailed things like, what do you think about Japanese women? Or what is your favorite Japanese food? And I don't know, my intuition, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but my intuition is if an American meets a foreign resident, someone who's recently moved to the US or has been there for a couple of years or something, I feel like the questions would be more along the lines of, oh, what brought you to the US in the first place? Or what do you miss about your home country? Or do you have a recommendation for a restaurant of your country's food in this town that you would actually recommend that's authentic? I feel like those questions would be more likely to happen than what's your favorite thing about the USA or why do you think the USA is so great and certainly there's a lot of Americans who think the USA is amazing but I don't know my intuition tells me that that would not be one of the first questions that is going to be asked so correct me if I'm wrong on that but it certainly is for the Japanese now I want to make one final point about this so-called inferiority complex that makes it sound like it's only a negative thing. I'm not sure that's actually the case because if you think about it, in Japanese society, it's normal to be concerned about what others think about you. Worrying about what others are doing, am I standing out, am I causing trouble, meiwaku for other people, it's just a natural thing in Japanese society that you are cognizant of what other people are thinking and what other people are doing around you and you're policing your own behavior appropriately. So extending that to caring about what foreigners think about Japan isn't much of a stretch. That makes kind of sense, right? You're saying, oh, uh, I, I want to know how we are seen in the eyes of foreign people and people from abroad and it's just an extension of that Japanese society need to be cognizant of the needs and experiences of others. So it seems like a natural extension is what I'm saying. I mean sometimes it feels like a lot of navel gazing and oh Japan is so special and the foreigners keep re reaffirming this for us. Ooh. But uh, in actuality it, it does make sense from a cultural standpoint. Again pride you know, some people would look at that pride and say that it's a bad thing or misplaced, but I would say that Japan and the Japanese has every right to be proud of their culture and their history because it's a fascinating place. And I mean, obviously I love it enough to be here and have lived here all these years and found it fascinating throughout. And so, yeah, I mean, they have every reason to be proud of their country. So that's not strange to me at all either. Now let me know what you think. Add in the comments anything that I missed. Do you agree or disagree with something that I've said? I really enjoy the conversation because I'm still a small channel. I'm very happy to read all the comments and I respond to most everything, at least if they're on topic. And if you're interested in suggesting topics you'd like me to address or talk about something in particular, by all means, suggest it in the comments below. The best way you can support this channel is to engage like that, subscribe, hit the like button, comment, share with other people who you think might be interested in this channel and content and well i mean the main thing is just keep tuning in subscribe and keep coming back and i hope i continue to make videos that you're interested in watching if you want to support me more directly i do have a patreon which i'll link below and i just set up a member section on youtube that's brand new live this week if you join the member section there are certain perks like badges and access to videos early and that kind of thing so if you want to do that and support the channel that would be great i do have some costs that i incur making these videos even though it's just a hobby in particular i do spend transportation money on buses and trains to find new neighborhoods to film in that I haven't been before. So if you want to help out directly, that's how you can do it. Otherwise, thank you so very, very much for watching this particular video, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. There is an unfortunate side to this, as you can imagine, in that if you think about it, there's kind of an undercurrent of condensation. <laughs> condensation. Whew. I don't know why I chose to walk up this hill. Um,